Two weeks ago on this show, we featured an extended interview with Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. A short time ago, I spoke with Republican Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka. Take a look. And joining us now is Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka. Senator, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, are you staying warm up there? It's uh, it's cold up here. It's 20, 24 below or so. That's uh, more than I want. All right. Well, actually, you, you have a warm up. Mike said it was 39 yesterday, so at least you have that. But anyway, thank you so much for coming on. A couple of quick political questions before we get to the meat of the legislative session. First of all, we had the impeachment yesterday. I know that you have been a big supporter of President Trump's. Is President Trump or former President Trump still the leader of your Republican Party? You are arguably the most powerful Republican in the state of Minnesota. People look to you for leadership. Well, I still support a lot of the policies that Trump uh, accomplished, uh, but certainly the behavior after the election uh, was damaging. And so we, I think we have to move forward. Uh, I think he'll still have a voice. I think it's important to remember that he really connected to what I would say is the everyday person or, or what other presidents have said, the forgotten man. And those messages still ring true. It's just that I don't know that he'll be leading that. Well, you have spoken very much to that same group of people, and you are considering a run for governor in 2022. Uh, are you ready to announce right now? <laughs> uh, I got to get the budget done, which is uh, what I've said every time. Uh, I'll look uh, this summer, but yes, I am considering it. But uh, the budget is too big a deal for Minnesota right now. And you know, we're the only divided government or legislative body, I think, in the country. And so I'll focus on that and then turn the page once we get to about June. Yeah, we are the only divided government in the country. What a lot of people, I think, don't know is that you actually picked up seats in this past election, uh, in both the House and the Senate. What does that say to you? Well, I, I do think our message rings true to Minnesotans and, and to Americans. And so that's why, uh, you know, Trump, part of the reason he didn't do well is his personality. There was a, a intense hatred by many, uh, but the issues are still out there. Well, we need to get mining going, the pipelines moving forward blue collar jobs. I mean, there's just a lot of things that uh, we connect with the, the public. And I, the Iron Range, which has been Democrat forever, those two senators have now aligned with us. So that, that tells you there's a realigning. Uh, we'll see what it looks like in the end, but I think it bodes well for Republicans. And not only did you pick up seats, you're referring to the fact that uh, Senator Tomasini um, and also Senator Bach, of course, um, have aligned with independents, uh, and they are now actually aligned with you folks. So you really do have a powerful block, and you're saying no to the governor's tax proposals. Yeah, you know, we have a budget that we have to get done. If you don't balance it, uh, the government shuts down. So we really have to work towards making sure we get it done. But we have eno enough reserves to cover that shortfall. And I would like to reduce spending. I don't know if the Democrats will. That would be another way that we can balance it. But what we will not do is raise taxes. But there are a lot of tax proposals out there from the governor. Are there any that are particularly that are sort of higher up on your priority list for, for saying no to? Or is it the whole bunch? Well, it's actually just easier to say no to all of them. Uh, two years ago, he wanted the 20 cent gas tax. Now that's off the table and he's, he's working on other issues. But it, why do we need a tax increase when we can balance the budget without it? Two years ago, we had more than a billion dollar surplus and he still wanted to raise taxes. And so, Think about it. Think about what everybody's gone through this last year. Businesses struggling, mm -hmm. families struggling. They don't need another tax increase. So, so we're not going to do that, but we will work together to balance the budget. One thing that has to be solved really soon is this extra money that the governor says he needs, $35 million, for a mutual aid pool of money in order to keep everybody safe during the upcoming trial of Derek Chauvin, who's accused of murdering, uh, of course, George Floyd. You are against that. You're saying it's, it's a bailout for Minneapolis. Is that really fair? So I'm, I'm not against uh, resources for the police. Uh, we're very supportive of that. We don't have to have a fund up front to do it. We can pay it after the fact. Uh, but I, I will say when Minneapolis cut their budget, $8 million for safety, and then they want us to come in, that's where I call it a bailout. I want them to uh, replace the, the resources that they have reduced, the $8 million. 
They're down over 200 police officers from last year. They need to make a better effort at, effort at hiring more police. But we're going to make sure the streets are safe. That has never been an issue to me. We just want to make sure that the, the city of Minneapolis pays their bills. The, the residents of Minneapolis, the businesses of Minneapolis deserve that. Well, in, in terms of that, the, the city did just add $6 million to, to hire new police officers, but there is an ongoing debate within the city council. The city council is up for election, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens later this year on, on this particular issue. But in the meantime, there are some people who feel this whole debate on what should be paid for, also for the cleanup, is something that's racially charged. Do you agree with that? Well, it's not for us. It's uh, that the, the, the government of the city of Minneapolis has been dysfunctional. Uh, if you look at the very beginning of the riots, uh, uh, certainly the governor first and then the mayor, they, they failed to act in a prompt manner over four days of delay. And I really think that's part of the reason this spread out everywhere and people got the sense that they could uh, be lawless and get away with it. And so we've got to, we have to make sure that we are proactive and ready for the trial that's coming up. I think we should plan to not have the violence or stop the violence if there is some. I think that's the best course of action. You do that by making sure you have a, a large force out there. I would say after the first month or so, the governor got better at responding quicker to the lawlessness. Okay. Uh, in the aftermath of that horrible tragedy in Buffalo, there are some people who are saying Minnesota does need to tighten its background checks and red flag laws. Uh, that has been blocked by the Republican-led Senate. Certainly, you're the leader of that. Is that going to happen again this year? I, I don't see a lot of policy activities being done this year. With COVID, uh, we have our, our nonpartisan staff do not work at the Capitol. They work from home. And so it's extremely difficult to get everything done. We're going to get the budget done. That's my focus. We're going to stick to the fundamentals, uh, work as hard as we can to get the vaccines out to everybody. I think that's a key that everybody wants. We want the businesses up and running, and we want kids back in school. That's our Senate file, too, that kids should be in the classroom, not one day a week, five days a week, not just uh, kindergarten, uh, uh, all the way up to K-12. All the kids got to be back in school. There's no excuse. The science validates what I'm talking about. CDC says it's safe, so we should be doing that. All right, and you were actually critical of the governor uh, when he reopened uh, the restaurants to 50%, saying he should have done it with much more notice. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I'm glad that he's moving forward with some of these things, but it should have happened a while ago. And he compared it against Iowa, saying Iowa had 25% infection rate, which was not accurate. Ours is around 4 Theirs is around 5%, but they're completely open. So that's the number that we should have been looking at. But, but And then when he made the announcement a week earlier, he said uh, no changes in sight. And then suddenly two days, uh, I mean, he gives them a two-day notice to open everything up. If you're a restaurant, you have to buy food. You have to buy resources. But uh, I'm glad we're moving in the right direction. But again, let's focus on getting the vaccine out to people over 65 once we vaccinate the, uh, the population that's older, the risk goes dramatically down and we should be able to live our lives. And that's the number I'm telling the governor, well, at least lift emergency powers once we get to vaccinating people 65 and over. All right. Well, Senator Gazelka, it's always a pleasure. Stay warm up there. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us so much of your time this morning. Thank you.